In this video, I will explain how to track scrolling with Google Analytics 4 and several ways where to find that data. When it comes to scroll tracking, I've noticed that there are two approaches. Some people send an event which is named scroll, and then they also send a parameter called percent scrolled, where they send the percentage. It might be 25, 50, 75, and so on. Then another approach is that other people might want to send just the event name, and inside that event name, they also include the percentage. So all they send is the event name, which is scroll 25, scroll 50, and so on. Personally, if I decide to track scroll on a particular project, I combine both of these approaches. And what I do is that I send an event, which is called scroll underscore and then the percentage, but I also send the percent scroll parameter. Because in some situations, for example, path analysis, the event name with a percentage could be useful. In other cases, the parameter might give me more flexibility. So let's take a look how can we configure this approach right here. Here I am in a Google Tag Manager container. Inside this container, I have a Google Analytics 4 configuration tag. If you have no idea how to install Google Analytics with Google Tag Manager, then I will post some additional resources below the video. Watch that installation guide first and then come back to this tutorial. Also in this example, I have a page which is quite tall, which means that I have lots of space to scroll. So now let's see what is happening in Google Tag Manager. I will copy this URL. I will go to Google Tag Manager, click Preview, and then I will enter that URL, click Connect. And now I will scroll to the bottom of the page. So here I will see one scroll event and if I expand it, it says 90%. But since we have this event model right here, it means that this interaction right here was actually initiated by enhanced measurement in Google Analytics 4. And since our goal is to track not only 90%, but also track other thresholds like 25 or 50, we will need to disable scroll tracking in Google Analytics 4. So let's go to Google Analytics 4, then admin, then select data streams, select your website data stream, then here click this cog icon, and then disable scrolls and click save. What we have done now is that we have disabled scroll tracking in GA4. Instead, we will be using Google Tag Manager's functionality. To enable that, you will need to go to Google Tag Manager, triggers, then new, trigger configuration, and then select scroll depth. Here you should select vertical scroll depths and then enter the thresholds that you want to track. Usually I do this 95, 50, 75, 90. Then usually this setting should remain as window load. Now let's give this trigger a name and then click save. By the way, I release Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager tutorials every week. If you want consistent flow of fresh knowledge and to stay up to date, then subscribe to this channel. It will help us a lot. The next thing that we have to do together with the scroll trigger is to check whether scroll variables are enabled. Let's go to variables. And here in the built-in variables, keep looking for variables related to scroll. If you don't see them, then click configure and then enable scrolling variables right here. Once you do that, let's click preview. This will refresh the preview mode. And then let's scroll the page a bit. And then we will look at the preview mode. And here we have one scroll depth event. I can click it. I can then expand it. And I will see that currently threshold, which was tracked, is 25% of the page height. If I go to variables, I will also see their values right here. Now let me scroll to the bottom of the page. And here I should see the remaining events, one for 50%, 75 and then 90. So this looks fine. Now we should send this data to Google Analytics 4 as events. To do that, first let's go to Google Tag Manager. Then we can go to Google Analytics Configuration Tag just to copy the tag ID right here. So I just copied it, then New, Tag Configuration, Google Analytics, and GA4 Event. Here, let's paste the measurement ID and then enter the event name. So the event name that I use is this scroll underscore, and then I insert a scroll depth threshold variable, which returns a number. It might be 90, 25, 75, and so on. It depends on what you have entered in your trigger settings. Then in the event parameters, let's add a parameter, which is called percent 
scrolled exactly like this. Google Tag Manager will show that this is a known parameter, which means that Google Analytics will recognize it. And in the value, once again, we will enter scroll depth threshold. Finally, let's add the trigger that we have recently created and give this tag a name. Click Save. Let's test if this is working. So click Preview. This will refresh the preview mode. Here I am on a page. And also together with that, I will go to Google Analytics. Then I'm in the admin section. And then here, click Debug View. We should already see some page view events. Now let's see if those scroll events appear. So I will go to the website, scroll down, let's say halfway through. I got two scroll events. One is for 25%, one is for 50%. Currently, there is a bug in Google Tag Manager preview mode. Sometimes tags are displayed as unknown tag type. But don't worry, your tags are not affected. This is still working. And after a while, this unknown thing will go away. Now let's go to the debug view. And here we have scroll 25 and scroll 50. We can click on the event and there are some automatically tracked parameters and also percent scrolled right here. Now let's scroll to the bottom. This will trigger two more events. Our tag fired. And in the debug view, we should see those events as well. And here they are. So it looks like everything is working fine. Your next step would be to publish these changes live. In Google Tag Manager, click Submit. Give this version a name, for example, G4 Scroll Tracking. And then click Publish so that these changes would go live. By the way, did you know that I have a bunch of free ebooks on Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics? So if you want to better learn these topics, then click the link below the video, download those ebooks and get started. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you will not start seeing this data immediately in Google Analytics other reports like the reports section or explore section. You will need to wait for 24, maybe even 48 hours until that data becomes available. But luckily I have another property where I have been collecting scroll data for a while. So I will show you some examples here. All of the examples will be done in the explorations because I think in standard reports, viewing scroll data is not that convenient. Therefore we will build some freeform exploration. So once you go to your Google Analytics property, click explore and then blank. So the first example, how you could see the scroll data could look like this. In the dimension section, click plus and then select two dimensions. One is page path, and then select this one, and then add event name. The reason why we need event name is because we are going to filter down to just particular events. Then click confirm. In the metrics, I think we can include event count, and then select that. And then let's add the page path to rows. If that does not work, then you can just double click it. Whoops, wrong dimension. So add page path to rows right here. Then in values, add event count. And then in filters, we need to filter down just to those events where event name matches regex and then scroll underscore and any number or anything that goes after. So technically, there are several ways how you can achieve this, but I will just simply add dot asterisk, which means scroll underscore and then anything. So click apply. This is how many scroll events did we get on each page, but we don't know how many of those were scroll 25 or scroll 50. So the one approach how we could tackle this is to add event name in the columns. And now we see pages and then how many times each scroll event was triggered. So it looks like a very basic version of the funnel where we have this and then this and then this. We could take this even one step further. For example, we could add one more column which shows the number of page views. Then we could see how many page views did that page get and then how many times people scrolled past 25, 50 and 75%. The reason why I don't have 90 is because in this property I am not tracking 90% of the scroll. I'm just tracking these three thresholds. So now I could update my filter to include not only scroll events but also page view event. So I added pipe, which means or and then page view, click apply. And now I have page views and then scrolls. So we see how many times people saw that page, then how many times they scrolled past 25%, 50 and 75.
So this is one way how you can visualize that. Another way could be by using the percent scroll dimension. Since we are using percent scroll parameter, we can click plus in the dimension section and then look for percent scroll and then confirm. Instead of using event name as a column, we can use percent scroll instead. In my case, page view does not have the percent scrolled parameter, therefore we have an empty value right here. But this first column still represents page view events because right now we are filtering to page view and scroll events. So scroll events have percentages while page view does not. Technically, if you want to have this table prettier, you could send with all page views a static percent scrolled value, which equals to zero. But I didn't do that, therefore I have empty field right here, which means page view and then scroll events right here. One more option how you could build this report could look like this. So instead of having percent scrolled as column, we can add it as rows right here, and then we select nested rows, yes. So now we see the page where the scroll events happened, how many page views did we get, how many times people scrolled past 25, 50, and 75. So this looks visually very close to a funnel and we can see quickly where the biggest drop-offs happen, or maybe where the pages are quite short. For example, this page is not very tall, so it's very likely that when the visitor just views that page, multiple scroll events happen at the same time. And you could take this even a bit further. For example, you can just narrow down to particular pages. For example, those pages where the URL contains courses. And here I could use some metric, but maybe I want to also narrow down to a particular host name because I have two host names. One is for the website and one is for my course platform. And both of those platforms have courses in the URL. I would like to see only the performance of the blog. So here I could add another dimension, which is called page location, confirm, and then I can add another filter where page location contains and then HTTPS www.analyticsmania.com slash courses, and then apply. And now I see how the main courses page performs, then how one course page performs the other one. And I could notice where the biggest drop offs are. For example, this course right here has a lot of drop offs. So maybe I should try to fix something at the top of the page because very few people scroll below a particular section. Or maybe people already click on my CTA, which is call to action on that page. So I will need to investigate this further. And that is how you can track scrolling with Google Analytics 4. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.